When they ask the Buddha, what food should I give to you? Okay. The Buddha says, I only ask for pure food that comes from the pure mind. So learn this sentence. It's a very beautiful sentence, right? I only ask for pure food that comes from a pure mind. This is stated in the Sutta. So food that you give to the monks comes from a pure mind. A mind that is happy before you bring the food or when you purchase the food. Your pure mind, the happy mind state when you give the food to the Sangha and the aftermath effect. After giving the food, you still feel the joy of giving the food. So that's why it's good for us to give food or offering to the Sangha personally rather than be next time, you know, Mona Mona. So you don't feel the happiness. But if you are somebody who wants to feel the joy of giving, you feel the joy before, during, and after. Do you agree or not? When you prepare the food, cookie, you, you were singing while you cook, you put in the Tupperware or the TV, you go there, wait for the party to come, then they say, Pantil, ayo, Pantil, ayo, Pantil, ayo. Then all of you, the next time, very fast, huh? take off the shoes, kneel down already. Then the party comes, you give the food, and you feel the joy during and after. So that joy, I think, is the happiness that one can give from Dharma. So this is the regular answer, all from the suttas. The practical answer says, see what the monk likes. If the monk likes to eat certain food because of his diet requirements, some monks are quite weak, you know. Okay, so if they need certain food, you just see the table, we observe them. So give them what they like to eat. Like I said this the other day, if you have a happy mind, happy mind state when you eat your food, then happiness comes to your cushion and it brings back to your sleeping dormitory. So remember in temple I had the I was Bhagavanarita too, I was a Sramanera too. Luckily all monks in my temple did not get diabetes. Because the only thing they always bring to temple is sugar. We start there, one mountain of sugar. <laughs> Luckily we don't eat all the sugar. Then in the temple, uh, when I was cooking, uh, I always run out of, of salt. Bona ho yame So I was cooking, cooking, helping one day, he shot, pini shot. I have to scream for help to get a little bit of salt for the cooking. So you see, sometimes uh, we got no, 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 no wisdom, you know. We buy the so much sugar for the temple, you want the monks to eat all the sugar. Correct, right, uh, you see, the next town people near la, our New Year coming already. Uh, then we got a stretch of head, then to give the sugar. You don't expect that you give the people the sugar to the old folks, so all the aunties got diabetes. <laughs> so sometimes we must give wisely. So that's the answer. Remember the best sentence? Give pure mind. Food that comes from pure mind. Food that comes from the happiness in the cooking. The happiness in the cooking can be reflected on the happiness on the dish that is served. Do you agree? If you cook very rashly, one, uh, the food also you put on the platter or whatever, you can feel that this person uh, rush time to cook one. I remember when I was a scrumman there, when I tried to cook one, I always tell myself, I got no time to cook one. Uh. So all the chai seed, you know what I do? Uh, I put in one row. You know, you know, the, the tiam. Uh, I put all the chai seed in one row. I cut three ways. All the chai seed finish everything. Yeah, see, I think that just shows that you don't have the love for cooking. Okay, master see, he knows already. You see, your Chai Sing, Teng Te Te Teng, and I quite long, long chat. And I see you Cheng Kiyo Chia, you know, Swa Go, Swa Go, and Sing Tu Chia. You know, so that's when you can see where you put your heart in. Okay? Clear or not? Okay. Uh, my normally, uh, there's a question here. They want to join my retreat in 2024. So, for the first retreat, I think you know who to refer to. Yes. Then, the rest of the retreats, 2024, I'm afraid already filled up uh, full already. So, maybe it's 2025. Normally, I don't have retreats. I have people who come and approach me and say, Sir, so, I want to learn this thing in the retreat. So I want to take you to this place for these four days or five days. I want to learn this thing, your suttas or whatever. Then I give you the details and prepare the details and I follow you. So I follow your wishes rather than my wishes. 
So maybe two or two five, you can approach me and see what can be done. Two or two four, fill up already. Okay. Next question: What does noble silence entail? Noble silence is silence that comes with wisdom. Everything must come with compassion and wisdom. Do you agree? So noble silence does not mean absolute noble silence. In the first day of retreat, like me also, we are not sure of this place. I have to open my mouth and ask one. Because where is the fourth floor? Where is the third floor? Where are the rooms kept? Where are the mobs being kept? This is necessary talking we must talk. Or maybe you share the water not to, you know? Use this water sparingly so you have to tell the people don't flush or what. It is necessary to talk. We must talk. That's why Ajahn Brahm in his joke one day he said, When I talk of normal silence, please use it wisely. You see, if there's a fire, open your mouth. You do two simply. <laughs> fire, fire. And everybody will be asking, What are you talking about? So if there is emergency or whatever, open your mouth and speak only when necessary. Now what we are afraid of is what we know. We are afraid of is we the Buddha say they are they are always uh, we can say two types of talk, but the talk can lead to the other one. But the Buddha says the best is dharma talk. He asks the monks if you have dharma talk, talk at night discussion. No dharma talk, shut up. That's just what the Buddha said. Either you meditate, you have dharma discussion, or you shut up. Now this is uh, actually being stated in the Sutta. You can check the Nikayas. It is called the Gosinga Sutta. A Maha Gosinga Sutta and the, and the Gosinga Sutta. There were three friends, three good friends, three monk friends. Nandia, Imbara and Anuruddha. Three of them very good brother monks. No? They meditate together, go for arms round together. And then now when there's nothing to do besides appreciating the moonlight, they will discuss Dharma. Okay, even Arahans also want to discuss Dharma. Why? Because each person's experience is different. Like Atsantra is more an Australian experience. And one time he asked, he said, when everybody dies, everybody goes to Karkata and Fremantle. What is that? I don't know what is that. Lah. So I, I look up. Oh! Just like Pindeng, Patu, Gantong, and Telo, Pahang, and Mao Eskina. <laughs> so when I give my Dharma talk, I can't talk about Fremantle and Kau 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 or whatever. I say, you want to see it? Hello, Patu, Gantong, Lo, Atta, Lang, Chai, Ma. You see a lot. Uh, so, same case in here. We only talk Dharma or you don't talk. That's just the ones you observe. Normal silence or you talk Dharma. But the trouble is that the Buddha say, if you are the non-enlightened being, like most of us are, our Dharma talk tend to become market talk. Now the Buddha used a very good word. He says once you start to talk about Dharma, then we no more talking about Dharma, you talk about everyday business, already politics, what do you buy in the market, all these other things. The Buddha called it Pirachana talk. They look at the word animal talk. Animal talk. Or sometimes the Buddha used another term, you know, he called it Sampa Parapa. So I was thinking, hey, how come Pari language to say that I was okay? Sampa Parapa. Sampa Pari. Sampa, you know, so you can check the two terms. Kira Chana talk is called animal chatter. Another one is Sampa Parapa. It means you talk about sky, talk about this. And this is what I observe. But you see, we monks must be observant. What? Whenever I go out, I always see people 7 30 in the morning. The auntie say they got no time for meditation. But in the market, 7 30, they can hold the basket while buying the things so heavy. They meet somebody along the road, they can talk for 15 minutes non stop. <coughs> Ah, 
Sampa Paramatok. That's why we ask you to have normal silence. Try to practice normal silence. Okay? So, if somebody were to ask you a question, the same you cannot answer. It's not that you cannot answer, it's just that we are afraid that normally, when normal people like us, after Dharma talk, we turn to Irai Tana talk already. You know what I mean? Uh? We use it as an excuse to talk. I don't understand. Is that I come from the same one word? Uh? You can repeat after for me. Uh? Then after that, talk, talk, talk already. If we allow that, uh? then after that, we talk normal talk already. So better don't use the Dharma talk among friends during the retreat. You do not need to better pass our chant. That's the best. Or refer to the suttas. Okay? But after, I think our retreat, after this morning, I think we can talk already. Uh? If not, all of you go back to be like zombies. Ah, remember to walk fast when you go back huh? because I was at one time a person who learned walking meditation he went back, it took him one hour because he said pedal on, pedal drive slowly, slowly, set, steering, steering so all cause traffic jam one hour to you this is your mindful point huh? so a chance says don't, don't then you go back to your normal pace of life if not you walk even slower than the bodies Okay, okay. So remember, try to minimize talking unless it's necessary. If you are sick, you must tell people you are sick. Then the organizers can get you the medicine. The people who live with you can take proper care of you. Now, this one was actually no need to answer. Uh, Chan answered, Dear Venerable Kansi, please elaborate on the process of cultivation of meditative insight that leads to the severance of self identity view. Very simple. Self identity view means uh, you always say something belongs to you. So that is called self identity. I call it identifiers. You know what I mean? Like my seat, everybody they are not sit already. Su Fu seat, Acham Brown seat. So for 10 days, this is a self identity. So after Acham left, no more self identity. So if everything belongs to you, there is one danger. The danger is to think you can control things. In life, you can't even control our body. Who wants to grow old? I also don't want to get white hair or grey hair. That's why we block ourselves in gravity. We dye our hair. All these type of things is to show that we want to deny realities in aging, sickness, and death. So, self identity also means you want the people you love to be like you. If I'm a doctor, I want my son to be a doctor because that is called an extension of self. Okay, just like last time when we were young, we had the advertiser factory advertisement when I was a layman. The hair can go very long. Cannot be young, see why. Cannot be young, make it cow to me like. Ball the cow to me like. Why can't that see me? But I got to cow to the king, I don't like a cow, cow, cow. Popular colors are going to be octopus. Octopus is pretty car, pretty car. That's why we got normal people up. Okay, so. If you learn that everything is just a process, like what I just said, every every the first story of the coronavirus, the bushfire. I know you are reading the books there. The bushfire episode is not just for fun reading. It is to show that Ajahn has dropped the self identity. He doesn't identify himself with the Buddhist that he built. He was a builder. He always jokingly said to me, "Hello, Kaisi. The buildings that are built in." Uh, Buddhiyana, he said, contains my blood samples. Because for many a times I cut myself, bleeding, the blood seep through the wood. So you sleep in that booty, you are sleeping on my blood. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, he told us to say, oh, the one I can't feel is that when the fire came and took over those places, but did a chant cry and say, oh, my effort gone. The reporters and the people are saying, well, how do you feel? What would you do? He said, tomorrow I just start to build the first scooty. If all of them had been burnt out, dark by the fire. But you know, like they must always protect the good places. Virtuous people get protection. Everything may be a bit, you know, smoke may cover the area, smoking. 
but nothing was sandwiched. Who has the, you know, the 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 the, 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 the power to say I will start building from nothing tomorrow? Jena Jena, one and four dollars, it's going to be too easy to go on it. I'm just like Hong Kong, so that we start near the city, they will see you. They are Hong Kong, they go back to you. Ah, Hong Kong, isn't it? Every other somebody say that one of the main people Hong Kong go back to you. Ah, but I just say I will start to build again tomorrow. It means I don't identify myself with the things that I build. I just treat it as nature that comes, nature that goes. If you read the COVID book, it says nature has raw deals. Nature will not see more change. The kitchen can be just put the kitchen bar on the table. That is called raw deals in life. So COVID can come and take the loved ones away from you. Okay, huh? Next question. I am always fearful of sickness. Every single sickness makes me worry. What should I do to alleviate the fear? Thank you. At the best, the best thing to say is all of us will face sickness, old age, and death, and time. Like I said the other day, say so everybody is in the same boat. Why fear? Even the exceptional is fear, but not kind of young. Ping Chan Ba Ram Si Sen Lao Pei Si Chuan Tian. Okay, we are born. We are reborn, so we just hope not to be reborn only. Then we are all getting old. Uh, we are all of us are old already. Like, say, even the one day old baby is called one day old baby. We will all get sick. And there will be something like the noose of the cow that drags us to the slaughterhouse. The Buddha said in Sutta Nipata. You know that the Buddha is calling the slaughterhouse. The Buddha is coming to the slaughterhouse. Can be sickness? Can be just simple old age? You know, when you die, you, know, you cannot overstay one. Okay, so all this stuff we don't know. I may die of cancer, you die of accident, you die of heart attack. This is what we call the S and P small words that all of us have signed. No exception, lah. That lah, move on. You only move half a day. That you move half a day, you mean yeah? You become a sporting Buddhist. So they always say, be a sporting Buddhist. A Buddhist who accepts that the body will go away one day, who goes and see the doctor when he is sick. Like a chance and tell the doctor, 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 there is something right with me. You know, we monks are afraid to go and see doctor. Once you call go a chance to see a man, you go and tell the guy say you don't like him. The first one go, you who make him pay? Yeah. What's up? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's always the the notion that you cannot get sick one. You also human beings, brain. The Buddha got sick eighty years old, very sick. Got diarrhea, and I think if you look into the commentaries, they say it's dysentery or what ah can give you sixty times a day. I haven't seen that commentary say lah. Nak cepat awal ye, ye 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 tu tu sabu ye lah bingkai mua. Because outside kita buat papers, ananda tu kaya say ini masih lap masih bolak. Kui lah si buda kongking salah mana kau? Buda kongking kui lah buda kaca jadi tiang dah. Kalau lama mana kaca suing kaca tiang. Then what the Buddha say, the Buddha don't get one, the Buddha don't Ananda, I want to go and lie on my back. Ananda, you continue. But the Buddha will lie at the back corner there. He has the ears to listen to what Ananda said. Or sorry, Buddha said. This is the Sutta. Then when everybody left on the night, just go gossip a bit. Wow, this afternoon, Ananda gave Dhamma talk low. Wow, it's Pante Buddha. It's the Dhamma talk of quality. The Buddha said. If I had to speak during that time, I would speak the same words with Ananda, meaning the quality is there. So this is to show you the Buddha is also like us: old age, sickness, and death. That's why the Buddha says, at the age of thirty-five, when I, I can always say under the Bodhi tree, I got my enlightenment. At the age of thirty-five, I lost my mental sum. Do you agree? All the farmers are gone. That is called Sam Anu Pedesa Nibbana. Meaning, the Nibbana I got while I still living, 35 years old. The bliss of non-departments 
or non-mental suffering. Non-mental suffering means I know I accepted suffering. It is part of life, not like you. You cancer me, you do that. I mean, so what if you cancer? What like we treat it with your cancer that is showing you. So I said, I can't always say it's not the cancer that kills you. It's thinking of the cancer that kills you. Do you agree? The mental constructions, your will, your jetana, your sankara, they cause a lot of pictures to come up. Why me? Why me? Why me? That kills you. Not the physical thing that kills you. When the Buddha was 80 years old, he about the Mahaparinibbana. They said the word Mahaparinibbana means the great Nibbana of the Buddha. It means the Buddha has also given up his body. At that time, he has no physical suffering. So we have two types of suffering. Two types of suffering. The physical duck and the medical duck. All of us have physical duck on. I told my devotees, Tini Chiu Kwa, Kwa Kiru Chet Chai, Ma Si Sa Chi Kai Ho. Chiu Kwa Nya Ha. Heo, Nya Ha Chie Plaster, Lu Bu Bu Kwa Ling Ta Ta Le Kwa Dam Chik, Kwa Ling Kwa Ling Plaster, Kwa Ling 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 Kwa this is physical suffering. So the Buddha at the age of 80, he left two sufferings. That's why we call it the Anupadisesa Nibbana. So in Buddhism, if you read the Nikayas, the Buddha is a common person like you and me. They can look like a Buddha, they have to be Buddha. Ah, Buddha! I thought that's karma and the Bob Brothers says for theory sigla. I think the Buddha will say, Ado, Tiao. Buddha will come, I am neutral, equanimity. I don't think so. The Buddha will do that. The Buddha will say, Yeah, get the term blue black or so on, you know. It's just like you and me. This is called the physical suffering that the Buddha makes. When he died, he gave up all types of suffering. So, all of us have this type of suffering. We must be sporty. All people have family, same family problem, relationship problem, money not enough problem, like what we have been our lessons so far with Acha. So it's part and parcel of life. That's why you know why the Buddha taught in the Tevija, the night of Wokaya, his Acha said, Tevija, three times he saw the workings of karma, the workings of rebirth, and then the eradication of the at the time, they call it Te Vija. Te means three. Tri, T R I. Vija is the Vija Tarana, the wisdom. Another word is called Panya. Okay, wisdom. So, why did he see all this? After seeing so many cases, he realized that it's not. So, you can see your past life by your meditation. I can see your past life, see his past life. I think after seeing four or five people, look at my father. You can have a common answer already. No need to look already. So remember, if you feel sick, if you feel illness, not only you, all of us have the same thing. Buddha also cannot escape you. Okay? Next. Why is it that I get some muscle cramps and pulling of muscles during my meditation sessions? Okay, very simple. If you have done, please use the cloth to cover your legs if you feel cold. The shawls are very helpful. Or if you, if you don't have the shawl, you can always use the big towel. Then you can cover up your legs. Another thing I always remember, every time before you start meditation, it is good to have what they call physical contact with your body. Meaning, you find that your limbs are a bit difficult, just rub it a bit. Your head or whatever, give yourself a time cause the heart sound. Of course, besides that, you can always uh, soften your muscles, see what part not so okay, because when you start your meditation, your mindfulness is still caused, you can always massage yourself or do something to your body. This is called the physical comfort part. So whenever there is stress or whatever in our life, we have the mental counterpart. But the physical counterpart can be seen on your facial expression. So likewise, if your body does not feel comfortable, just give it a nice thing. 
For example, people who got heart problems. You know how I teach them the heart scan? I just say, imagine I'm not a biology teacher, the heart is here somewhere here. All of them, arteries and veins, they are like your highways. You know highway? Sometimes I will talk in English also jam, some highway also jam. So imagine all the highway got blockages, got jam, just give it a nice massage first. Okay, highway open up, bottleneck problem solved. Okay, motors and all the cars and vehicles can pass through when the highways open up. Ah, so imagine like this. It helps you to clear your blockages. So imagination and mind power is very powerful. Okay? So physical massage, everything can be done initially. But don't do it once you get into your inner mode. Okay? Last one. Can I sit down and chant Kuan Yin Fu Shan until I become quiet instead of Budo or not or not holding the breath? Initially, yes. Initially, you can chant Kuan Yin, you can chant whatever that you like, Budo or Itipiso a few times, just to inspire yourself, just to clear the, the two luggages, the past luggage and the future luggage. But after things become quiet already, then we go back to the final aspects of meditation. So this is a very good way to start off the meditation. But always remember, whatever things that you use, know the virtues. Don't just say Kuan Yin, Kuan Yin, but you know what is Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin means compassion. So it is like Meta to you, just like chanting Meta. You instill the Karuna or the Meta inside your heart. So it's good to start your meditation with Meta. Once there is Meta, there is no separate. Once there is Meta, there is no uh, first two hindrances, Kama Chanda and Vyavada. Actually, these two hindrances is 80% of the five hindrances. If you can overcome the first two hindrances, then overcome 80% of the battle. It is all desires and hatred. Hatred and desire are two sides of the same thing. First, I love you. I love you, I love you, I want you. Cannot get the girlfriend, the grapes are sour. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I want to kill you. You know, the book says the grapes are sour. Two sides of the same thing. So, Dharma is very simple. I always say, when you wake up in the morning, until you sleep, you may say two things. You will prepare your sankara already. One point, one mind. ที่นอนชุดเกี่ยวเจอเพราะมาเสียงความคุยซ้ำไปความมีเกี่ยวกับความเกี่ยวความมีเกี่ยวกับความเกี่ยวความมีเกี่ยวกับความเกี่ยว
very simple. Taoist method of meditation, they have learned a lot. But they always also, they also see the limita. They can go sit for hours or they can go to the jhanas. But what is so different between other methods of meditation, the Indian method, Hare Krishna or whatever, you know, all the yogis, the Indian way of yoga or whatever, or chakras or whatever. What's different between them and what the Buddha has taught? The only difference is the Buddha has taught us the last four stages of Anapanasati, which nobody has taught before. That is, even when you get the light, you get the radiant light, your nimitas, etc., you get your jhanas or whatever, etc., they are all subject to impermanence, suffering, and non-suffering. It comes and it will go away from you. So the Taoist people, that's why they go for eternity, immortality. What we eat the immortality pill, all this longevity. They thought the heaven is permanent, eternal heaven, because the light happens to them to be so nice, they thought it is permanent, just like the Brahma. So the Brahma in the Hinduism, the Buddha always gave him one attack. He says, you think you are the creator, because you have to enter your first jhana, you can sit on nails, sit on pieces of scattered glass, and you say no pain. Of course, they enter into jhana already, but the jhana lacks the right view. When you lack the right view, right view, you think everything is permanent. So because of that, because of that, they go to a place, it's called the first level of the Brahma world, we call it the Maha Brahma world, so big space. Only one Brahma sitting. So he says, I'm the creator of this world. And I sit here permanently. I will be the creator and I live eternally. The Buddha said, No. Even jhanas are impermanent. If jhanas are permanent, then you don't have to wake up after the eight days. You <laughs> remember by the Atta. All of us who sit so well, when the five fatalities dries up, Bala, five fatalities, five indriyas dry up, you have to wake up already. When the nutrition in your body dries up, you have to wake up also. Even the Buddha must come up from jhanas every day or after many days. When he dies also, you must come up from the jhana in order to die. So everything is subject to impermanence. The only teacher who dare to say that is the Buddha. The rest of the teachers still say that it's the essence of self, that I water, uh, so that I have and I am. It binds all of us back to samsara. So there's some sorry I take so much of your time. I hope we share this together. Uh, Sa